my mind Bustin' on those with a dime Cardi in for the time Wings on my sneakers cause I'm fly Hundred thousand on my wrist Private islands with your bitch They talkin' about me in the lair I feel the hate up in the air is this mic good? It's okay. great. It's great? Yeah. That mic yeah. is $17,000. Mm. Oh, wow. That mic is good. That mic is more than my car, chain, watch, bracelet, <laughs> ring, <That> earrings. <laughs> it's good. I hear what is the Bronx to you? The Bronx to me is home. You okay. know what I mean? Like, I'm, I've been born and raised in the Bronx, um, Bronx Lebanon Hospital. Um, lived in the Bronx 16 years, moved to Queens, relocated. And um, the Bronx is my influence. That's my inspiration. You know what I mean, that's what started me, you know what I mean, giving me the feeling to want to rap, pretty much. And when did you start rapping? Um, I want to say probably... Like, when you actually, like, could call yourself a professional. Like, not when you first got... I mean, I don't think anybody could call yourself a professional until you actually make it. Okay, okay. <laughs> Truthfully, so I, I, I'm still not calling myself professional, but I probably started rapping when I was maybe, like, 16. Okay. Yeah, probably, like, 16 is when I actually first realized I could rap. And, um... I've been doing it for like the past like 10, 11 years now, so. Okay, so what comes easier for you? Is it writing or performing, thinking uh, of concepts? I can't even choose it. I, I, you know what, I want to say performing pretty much because um, writing, writing to me, like the way how I started writing, it all started like for me, like you know, having a lot of bottled up emotions inside of myself. I never was like the type of person that really liked to talk about my problems. So whenever I would just like, you know what I mean, get to the point where I feel like I'm about to explode, I would just write on my thoughts down on paper. So it kind of took a lot more out of me to write rather than um, performing. It's something that comes natural because like even coming up like in school, like I performed in like a lot of plays and things like that. Um, I went to a school of performing arts. So like acting is more natural and performing is actually acting. So. I would say like the the performance part probably comes a lot more easier than the writing and so forth. So when you, I heard you mention emotions mm -hmm. and things that drive you right. Could you elaborate on what that is? Like if someone didn't listen to your music and they're hearing this for the first time before they check you out, what what type of emotions do you tap into? Like is it something that is heartfelt? Are you doing it just for um, the the possible consumer, or is it something that's really uh, deep? I literally talk about everything that happens in my life. Like, um, perfect example is um, showcases. You know, like I've done a lot of showcases. Um, I've never really, you know, what I mean, like one too many showcases doing showcases. Um, perfect example is um, I made a song called "Say Something," which is basically. I mean, my emotions of not winning the showcase because um, mm -hmm. I feel that a lot of these showcases that they have out here nowadays are rigged. I feel like the showcases are actually to promote like the artist that's affiliated with the person throwing the showcase. And I've seen that because a lot of times they say that showcases is judged on style, originality, performance, stage presence, all these things that I know that I have and that the crowd reacts to, but I don't win. So, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I've done a song about, you know what I mean? My emotions towards these showcases. So, anything that happens in general, if this interview goes bad, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm gonna go I don't home. Know why I will, I'm gonna but... go home and make a song about it. If Yams put me on the oh. spot, <laughs> okay. you win candy Yams in the next round. <laughs> oh, God. That so, would be my first time hearing my name in the song. Oh, well, but anyway. It's the first time for everything. <laughs> Treat me good, all right, Candy? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Look, I gave her a new name live on the show. She go by Yams, but I'm calling her Candy Yams. So what's your, your current project are you working on now? Um, We're working on the EP. I got like like four joints done right now. Two of the singles. Um, One of them's called The Man, one's called Black Maserati. Um, We're working on a couple of features right now. We didn't <laughs> get them back yet. We're in the process of two two pretty big features. Um, I can't really name some just yet. But it's a, it's a strong possibility. You know how you're playing spades and be like, yo, I got three in the possible. Now I got three in the strong possible. It's a strong oh, I possibility. Never say you have a possible. <laughs> you talk about the strong Yeah, one. strong possible. You know what I mean? A couple of features going through. But um, it's it's not titled yet. Um, I just dropped the mixtape. It's called Living My Nightmare Wide Awake. 
And um, we just, like I said, we working on this this EP right now. It dropped in like February, and March. And what would you say is your biggest record? My biggest record, I haven't released it yet, and I don't want to release the name because um, it's going to be that big a record. I promise it's going to be the biggest, one of the biggest records, if not the biggest of the year. And when we drop the record, I promise I'm going to come back here and do the interview and say, yeah, so I told you this is going to be one of the biggest records of the year. Can't release the name yet, but I promise yeah, probably the big game. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's hard to go places, you know, they, they mistake me for James Harden everywhere I go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's it's hard to go places, you know what I mean? People think I'm playing ball, I'm telling them I'm rapping, you know what I mean? But it's all good. I'm definitely part of the beer game. What inspired you to grow your beer? Like how long have you been growing it? I actually started I've been growing it exactly a year now. Like oh I started growing it last November. I got pictures I can show you when I had a little stubble. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And um, actually, like, um, when it started, it was I started growing it from a bet. Oh, you know what I mean, um, okay. I usually keep a clean cut, smooth baby face. <laughs> and um, one day, like, uh, it was just hard to get to the barber shop, and somebody was like, "Wow, I never knew you grew hair in your face like that." Because I stayed in the barber shop like twice a week. Mm. And um, it was a bet. You know, I was telling the person like, "Listen, like, you don't understand. Like, my facial hair gets like Rick Ross." Mm. They were like, "Nah, I can't believe that." Like. No way, you know what I mean? And I was like, how much you want to bet? Like, and I started growing it from a bet, and as I was growing it, I got so much compliments on it, and you know what I mean? Like, so many people were just like, oh, I like the beard, this and that, and they started comparing me to James Harden. <laughs> I started getting extra attention in the clubs, you know right. what I mean? So I was like, you know what? We gonna run with this right You here. definitely have more hang time than Rick Ross. Oh, way more hang time yeah. than Rick Ross, yeah. yeah. So, okay, Casanova, I get it, like, smooth being. Reem, what is that short for? Like, is your name Kareem? What? What's... Wow, you hit that one. I don't know. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> you are good. <laughs> Just like Yams. <laughs> the you person who actually influenced me to rap was Mace. That's amazing. When I was a teen, I remember when I seen for the first time the video "More Money, More Problems." Yeah. Back then, you know, this is when we used to record. There was no DVRs and stuff I was like that. Doing that. We recorded <laughs> stuff on cassette tapes. Yeah. Right? I remember recording more money, more problems <laughs> eight times in a row <laughs> just so I didn't have to rewind it back oh to see God. the video again. Oh my and I God. knew every move from that video from throw your rollies in the side, yeah. waving side to side. I knew every move in the video. And um, from that point forward, like I, I just was, I, I just wanted to rap from that point forward to be honest. Like, That's amazing. He's yeah. great. So I could see Casanova, like he's smooth. He was like the pretty Yo, boy. Yo, Mace was like, my dude back then. Yo, seriously, man. He, he actually, he coming back right now too. So I'm looking forward to, to hearing some more new material. So would you say you have the typical rapper story? Like, you know, it was hard. I'm from the ghetto. My mom and dad, or if dad was there, was poor, like, we I from mean, the gutter, like, I, what's I your story? I don't know if you want to call it the typical rapper story, or if, if just the majority of rappers come from the hood. Right. You know what I mean? So, it, I, I, I can't really consider it being, like, the typical rapper story if that's where we come from. Well, I mean, like, as far as the I wasn't struggle. born with a silver spoon in my mouth, you know okay, what I mean? Like, okay, I, I, Yeah, a lot of our struggles are the same. I'm from the Bronx. Right. You know the Bronx. Right. I'm from the South Bronx. Right. From Daytona Park. You know, one of those areas where, you know what I mean? Like, we was... It's was, it was hard out there. Right, right, <laughs> it, right. It's still hard out there. Even now, when I go to visit, it's hard out there. And um, when I used to live out there, the dudes that I was living out there with is out there doing the same thing as they was doing when I was living out there. Because, so, mm -hmm. you know, people give Drake a hard time and... and <laughs> she doesn't necessarily... You know why people give Drake a hard time, in my opinion? Because why? Drake want to be from the areas we come from. You know what I mean? He had a, a, a beautiful life coming up. Right. But... He has earlier stuff material where, you know, he's and, and he has videos where he was, you know, trying to be something that he wasn't. Right. And I think in my opinion that's why people give Drake a hard time because, right. you know, we don't we wish we all wish we didn't have the upcoming that we had. We right. wish we had the type of life that Drake had right. to make to, it'd be easier to make something of ourselves. But, you know, when you come from that type of environment, you know what I mean, it's a lot harder for you know, these labels and these executives and people in the corporate mm. offices to really want to deal with someone who's coming from this type of background with the right. negativity surrounding them and the, the, you know what I mean, the jail time and the arrest records, they don't know if they want to invest money in you because, you know, this person may get arrested or he may get killed here from now and we can't make our money back, you know right. what I mean? Like, right. you know how it goes. So, in my opinion, I think that's why people give Drake a hard time. If Drake would have just came out from Jump 
and he wasn't talking up because I, I listen to Drake. I like Drake a lot too. Right. And he wasn't talking, you know, about a lot of the stuff they talking about about somebody popping you and these things. You know what I mean? You're right. I think Come he would have. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Like I think he would have. Uh, you know what I mean? I, I don't think as many people would really give him a hard time as they do now mm -hmm. from him. You know what I mean? And it's cool. Everybody wants to relate to someone in the struggle, but if your life and your upbringing wasn't a struggle, mm -hmm. then you know you shouldn't pretend that it was because it's nothing nice. True. Okay. So. Okay. There you go. Well, what's for the future for you? Well, for the future for me is hopefully I get to build a buzz as big as. 50 cents okay when you know what i mean when he first was coming up right and i could take the independent route and you know um hopefully start a label and okay. build up some artists and i'm into fashion heavy okay um, you know, definitely you're well dressed work. thank you i appreciate that you're i'm welcome. a fashionista you can call me okay. you know what okay. I mean? okay. so uh, okay. i would definitely you know what i mean love to you know me start my own clothing line and mm -hmm. like i said um I, I used to act once upon a time coming up all throughout high school i was in a play in school every year since the I want to say like the third grade I was in okay. the play from the third grade all the way up to like probably like the ninth or something like that you know what I mean so you know do some acting and um I said a couple of businesses things of that nature pretty much are you going to get back into acting I don't know if I want to say get back into acting because to be honest like doing music and rapping and shooting videos it's all a part of acting. Right. Like, you know, when you shoot a video, you're actually in front of a camera and you right. are acting. Right. So I, I don't want to say get back into acting, but I would definitely like an acting career to take off. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's what I would, I would like to say. That's nicely said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I like that. I'm on Brazil. <laughs> now for the penis question. Oh, here yeah. we go, Eric. Go. <laughs> I was about to say, because I went in the bathroom and measured myself <laughs> so I could be precise. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm down to the three quarters. <laughs> So what do you think about the space that we're in, like overall? What is, what do you think about it? Have you ever seen a place like it? What you, um, I don't know what you mean by that. Like, this space? space, this space, Dungeon Beach. Oh no, to be honest, um, I was actually saying that off camera. I was like, yo, this place is dope. It looks like a, a, a person who plays Jenga dream. Yeah. <laughs> actually, <laughs> like, when I first walked in, I just wanted to try to pull a block out the wall to be like, nah, this place is dope. Like, I can't even lie. Like, I definitely love it. Definitely, um, I would love to come back here and do some recording. You know what I mean? And, um, uh, this place is dope. I, I mess with Dungeon Beach Radio Service. I've never seen a place like this before. Um, I've heard that they got a lot of different things set up in different rooms and everything like that. Um, it's dope. Just like I said, just the environment is cool. Oh, your hair. Like, where, what's your ancestry? Um... You know, everybody want to be Indian. <laughs> <laughs> everybody want to like, be Indian. It's so, like, straight. I, I peeped on the side. I was like, yeah. oh, what? I, honestly, I don't know where I get this from. Like, sometimes I got to question my mother if my father's my father. <laughs> 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 I, don't I don't know where I get this hair from. I promise. Like, my mother's American. My father's Jamaican. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even have this hair, you know. Mm. But this hair runs in my family, though. Like to be honest, like my my sister, my brother, my mother, mm. grandmother, all my aunts, everybody has long hair. Like okay. So um, I, I guess it comes from my mother's side of the family. Okay. You see my grandmother. My grandmother actually, her brother just passed. Shout Your out to my. Just want to say the truth. <laughs> my, yeah. Shout out, shout out to my really? grandmother. You know what I mean? She just turned seventy-two actually a week Lovely. ago. And, um, She's a Scorpio. Yeah, she is. Oh my God! Yeah, her nasty out self. <laughs> she is a Scorpio with her nasty self. I, I was showing some video footage of her dancing, <laughs> dropping it like it's She's hot. She's just living life <laughs> at seventy-two. She's amazing. <laughs> Look, we know what you're gonna be doing. You seventy-two, <laughs> <laughs> living life. <laughs> yes. But um, yeah, now nah, it definitely comes from that side of the family. Everybody got long hair. My family, my daughter. That has long hair. Okay. Shout out to her, Brianna. You know what I mean? And um, that's where it comes from. You know I mean, so we're not gonna get into the deep roots of the Cherokee Indian and all that stuff. Okay, you know what I mean? Okay. But it sounds good. <laughs> okay, very nice. Well, is there yeah. anything that you want to say um, as far as what who you are? Like, if there's any like misconceptions about you, or if there's any actually, if there's a, like a speck of advice that you could give. Um, other people that you might inspire, like how you say that Mace inspires you, you're yeah. going to inevitably inspire someone. Like, what do you, what could you share with that person 
Well, what I, I what I would tell everybody that's want to come up and try to do their thing is um, slow motion is better than no motion. You know? A lot of times, a lot of up and coming, whether if it's artists, actors, actresses, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, um, a lot of people sometimes they um they they kind of get sidetracked because of the progress that they're making is it you know what I mean up to the pace that they wanted to be and um, right. to be honest like there's tons of artists who I use DMX as an example it took him 15 years before he got his first record deal mm. um, okay and th there's a lot of artists like I said it's, it's no overnight success and um prayer patience and persistence is you know what I mean you got to be persistent like a lot of times people think that um you can you know do a show here do a show there you can be on TV this time or have a reality show and do this and you're supposed to take off mm -hmm. but they don't know the behind the you know what I mean the behind the scenes grind work is a lot more like there's a lot of people who put a lot of money out who lose a lot of money out um, lose a lot of money from you know, investments and things of mm -hmm. that nature man and to be honest like you just gotta try everything and if and if that lane that you're in mm -hmm. I mean isn't working out for you you gotta switch lanes right and trying to find another avenue into it like so there's a lot of people who may start out rapping and it may not work out for them in that lane and then switch over and start out directing or producing and they may get into that like the Kanye West mm -hmm. they may get it on the production standpoint and then be able to work their way back into the other lane and then at that point you'll be in the fast lane you know what I mean so right. I was just telling everybody though you know what I mean just just keep grinding and never give up and um you know if this is what you love and what you want to do you know you just gotta keep pushing Got your girl wise for a wig Blowing cush shit polluting BVS is in the cube Dress to kill my house and shoot me We're from moving blue tops Dip hopping at the drop Shop a blow a hundred round AK-40 hear the sound I ain't got time for haters Cause I'm all Yo, we're right time with this dream casting over. Just finished the interview at Dungeon Beach Radio. Shout out to E, shout out to Jen, shout out to Candy Yams. I'm saying just killed the tour down, about to be on the way back to Queens. I'm saying for the drink of this, Remy Martin. And I'm probably going to the studio, so I'm like, God, you fuck with a bitch or two, maybe three. I never know, casting over all day, you get that cross you heard? We popping bottle after bottle. But a Ciroc got me tipsy. So drunk I thought I made Diddy.